veneering day. I was a little, I'm not gonna lie, I don't do a lot of this from time to time. It's probably the biggest one I've done on the kitchen. I finally got a chance to do really nice, you know, modern. But really, in my opinion, modern is about using top line materials and let materials shine through. Now, over there, I got all the doors lined up. Now, if you noticed, uh, it's pretty symmetrical, this kitchen. And that's the beauty, what I love about um, modern, is, is take the busyness out of things and look at it overall in one shot, and not, you know, not, not get your eyes overwhelmed. So you can see I got my pairs of doors matched right there, and my drawers to the right. You can see the first one, one, two, three, one, two, three. All doors and drawers are 33 and 36, okay? That means 36 long and 33. And so then all cabinets are 36 wide and 33. Okay, so I kept it simple, stupid, but there's a reason. Here's the veneer. Now let's, let's go take a look at this. All right. Now we're talking, I mean, it's sable, which is, correct me if I'm wrong on this. It's African, right? I'm just going to go right down there. Cortison. What attracted me was veneer supply had this. This was their lot. All fletched, meaning all the same all the way through. All right. Open up another one. Oh, look at that. Isn't that uh, perfection? Now, this is going to make it super easy. The only thing I can't do it is go from end to end and have an exact match because of the length that I have here. I'm like 72. But if you see the width here, I couldn't... Have, these are two doors end to end. And you can see right there that it's perfect. Isn't it? All right. I'm going door by door, and actually drawer by drawer also, and I'm just matching them up, just do it one at a time before I glue. So um, what's great about the Cortison Sable, almost from one end to the other, it's exact. And I will be putting a solid wood edging around. I'll show you that later, that it'll also um, make a better match at end to end. You'll see, You'll see what I mean later. Now, here, I'm using only a knife. I do have a veneer saw, but I'm very crappy with it. And I'm also crappy with a pan planer. It's because I don't use it very very often. So I tend to get impatient. And I'm just going along one by one, getting all my seams there. You're not seeing it there, but also some of them I had to join together. It was about five inches less. So I used a veneer tape and just match them like push as tight as I could and they came up very 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 well um, I didn't have to do much more than that I wouldn't recommend putting glue, glue at the end of those veneer edges then push them together it's unnecessary and I think you're going to cause yourself a lot of problems okay now the other one video we did on our channel there we did um, we did paperback veneer and we were able to use contact cement this no there's no paperback, so we got to use a special glue. We'll get into that later. So there's really no secret here. Just take your time. Uh, this this 72 inch length was perfect for the 36. The the wastage was almost minimum, which is great in that regard. You know, you hate wasting this stuff. No. I did a couple. And, you know, you get a little comfortable and you think, okay, I got this down to science. But anyways, I put a little too much glue and I didn't realize, I thought I was good. And what happened, this was, these were the doors, the pair down here, and it rippled. I was lucky enough, I saw it there and I flipped it upside down, put it in the vacuum on top of another one, and it's fine. But when I took it out, there was a lot of moisture. So... What I'm doing now when they come out is the initial moisture, you know, that's coming up to the surface because the veneer strength in the water out of the glue. I got an iron here. 
kind of take it out and hopefully hedge my bets. I have two down there that I just took out, and I'm going to run down in a minute and take a look. Now, I'm going to be a little more careful with that glue. So I've got my 80 grit. Let's go over my steps here. <laughs> down at the other end, all right? So be in control. Now, what I'm going to do, okay, so here goes my glue. You know, I don't want to put too much on. It's very dangerous putting too much on, man. But the other part there, the batch felt harder. You know, there's a little bit left in here. I've, I've since stirred it, a little bit that was at the bottom, and made sure. So make sure you have fresh glue. And truly, I mean, Stick with this glue press. Like they do have different glues, but I chose this. So now what I'm gonna do is I got my roller, I'm gonna go here. I'm just spraying the initial spread, not too hard. Alright. All right. And you see, it's almost impossible to do with that. So now I'm going to go here with my roller. Let's give it a shot. But you see, I'm a little blue star. Let's see if I can spread this around. And I don't know, I've invested in a better one. I got this, I don't know, some Chinese crap. I, I did get it from the veneer store. Not, but it, the only thing is, I'm just, because I'm pressing so hard, and I think. I'm uh, using it more than. See, your tendency is to put too much glue, right? Eh? It's just the way we, we're built, I guess. We want to make sure, okay, there's enough glue, but the veneer is really thin and it drinks the water and it gets too much water and it warps. It just lifts up, it doesn't. So I'm doing pretty good here. I think next time I'm just going to go foam roller. I'm not going to spread it out with that tool. I think I got... All right? Because I know I'm a little light right here, so I'm going to put a little dab. I'm just kind of get this a little bit out. All right. All right. Only because I, I didn't do well. Now, can, I'm at my edges. I wonder if these panels are about a half inch too big. All right, so I, I got a little juice to trim them. Now I'm going here, I'm going here, I'm going here. It, it takes a few times to do it. It, it kind of freaks you out a bit because you think, oh. I gotta, I gotta hurry before this glue dries. You know, and I'm guilty of it too. Right, right about now, I got an oversized sweatshirt and I'm really humid today. It had some rain the last few days, so everything's so friggin' damp. Okay. Now you know you got it. All right, see my pencil lines? There we go. I can still see them. And I look pretty even color, maybe a little darker there, but I'll live with that. I think I'm good. Now I'm going to put it on where I think it's going to go, right? 
Okay, so I'm going to go up here, here, a little down here. And got a little overhang. Eh? They told me to do it a little smaller, but I'm okay with, with my setup. So I'm not worried about the vacuum bag coming here and pulling that down. Right. My, my J roller is giving a little shot. I'm just not really hold down, just spread it out a bit. Alright. Um, I have two boards on the uh, bag right there. Uh, they're both a little longer, and one's over, so the veneer that's a little over won't get pushed in. And you can see I'm following my step, putting the glue on, um, as is in the first step. Uh, I don't know of, of another way to do this a little better. There's probably a little roller that you could get that could put the glue out, but I prefer this. I kind of eyeball it, and I'm looking for the color. Like, as long as my consistency, like, the color is even from one end to the other, and I know I got the glue uh, very, very, very well. Like, not too much, not too little. And I'm just lay it on there, take the roll there. What I'm really after is just to make sure that, that it's kind of sitting on there and there's no air holes or anything else like that. So kind of keeping the doors the same as much as I can. And now there's a larger wood there, so when the bag goes in, there's no chance of that crumpling the overhang. And there's this mesh that you put on top, and that does a great job. Now, these two I didn't like, so I'm putting them back to back, and I'm giving them another shot. I'm giving about one hour in the vacuum press, and it seems to be enough. All right, now I line it up. And there we go, the suction. I kind of watch it there to, to get the wrinkles out and keep it up so that the pressure is good. Now, there's not much you can do after this. And I'm taking them out now. What I'm doing now is taking the iron, taking out the moisture. Because having too much moisture with this veneer is a real, it's a real enemy. Um, you could wrinkle. You really got to watch it for about an hour two hours tops when it comes out of there you know keep it spread out let let the air get at it but at the same token you, you still want to get a little bit of weight on it there you know um the iron seemed to work out good because i had like you see on the other one i had a little bit of an accident okay i left it up for about five minutes to look at the other two see right here how it is Feel the moisture, so I'm gonna give it one try. Yeah, the one there with the wrinkle, so I'm putting it back in the press. You gotta hurry up, even though it was already in there for an hour. The glue's not totally set up uh, when it's perfectly dry, and I think also too, you're taking all the air out of that bag, so that, so that you get a little bit of life, and it really, um, you'll see here, it really worked out well. Right. It's the one that has a wrinkle. Alright. And I have it here, it ended up crushing it a bit. So what I'm gonna try, I'm gonna get one more Hail Mary pass. See if I can flatten it. I got four drawers loaded here. Yeah, I did save that door by putting it in again to the press. It worked out well. Here's the edging that I picked out. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's the heart of the uh, tree. So the match is really great. Use the push stick that I use there. Um, put in comments if somebody wants to see this push stick. It works amazing. I'm cutting three eighths of an inch. So no problems whatsoever. All right, trying to do the math for the doors. I made the doors exact size of the cabinets. So, with these, these are my uppers, 36 by 18. So, 18, 18 is 36, and I have two cabinets like that. Now, there's no gap. 
That's exact size. Now we're going to use solid weight edging. All right. Now I picked it there, like if you look there, I mean, look at the match on that, eh? I mean, we picked out the hardwood. We had, even though this is sable, which is supposed to be a little different, but it is from Africa, I believe it is, because there's a lot of different families and it gets confusing. So that's going to go on our edge, like here, right? Now, I do all my math here. This I do by hand. I didn't sit there with the computer. I want to double check. And I, don't forget, I got to sand these too. So you want to calculate some of that. So the nicest gap that you can ever get, an eighth of an inch is what you're supposed to leave. But sometimes it looks a little sloppy. A sixteenth is too tight with the European hinges. They'll rub if you get a sixteenth of an inch. So <clears throat> I like 330 seconds, which is 3 sixteenths, all right? Now, I got a half inch with these two together, so 11, 11 sixteenths, the two together. Now I'm gonna round it out, because this is about a sixteenth over, because I'm gonna calculate a little bit for sanding. Now hopefully my math is correct here. Basically I take three eighths of an inch all the way around to trim these bad boys, all right? And what I'm gonna do, I got this blade, I haven't, I haven't even used it, let's see if uh, this baby's any good. It's the Bosch Construction Trim 80 Toother. Now, I want a cross cut. Now this thing says it's the best. You got your little ratings here, you know. You, I got a ripper on the saw. When I say ripping, it's a ripping blade. I get the Diablo. Uh, I kind of, I'm kind of partial to that. It, it cuts well, lasts long. Really doesn't gum up much. Uh, because I did, I did from time to time a lot of exotic cuts. All right, I have lined up. I'm taking three eighths of an inch first. I have a little stop at the end. If you don't have a sliding table, um, there's other videos that, you know, that can show you make a sled and you can easily handle this. I never really had to make a sled because I got the sliding table. Now, with this, you might say, well, I don't have a table saw or whatever. When you're getting to this level, you want to go bring a razor game, get a table saw. A track saw is not going to bail you out on this thing. And the, the cuts were amazing with that 8230. I was very happy with that. And the other thing I would say with tools, ask yourself, do I want to spend 30000 on a kitchen? And I, I can do this myself. Spend 5000 on tools and you won't be disappointed. So I got all the doors chopped up. It's, well, maybe that's a bad choice of words. But now I got them all trimmed. Three eighths right around. And you, when you saw that fast, I took that little square there and just kind of eased it in. Now I've set my stop here for them. I'm doing the ends first. Right? Um, why am I doing the ends? I want it sideways so it looks like one piece, but on top, you will see the end. I'm not going to win here, but anyways, I'm going this way. Um, would I do 45s? If it was one piece, maybe decorative, maybe yes, but I'm not here because I might have to still take a little blade width off to get that really nice fit into the door. Plus, i got to run it through the sander, so there's a couple of variables because you're doing a lot here. Like, if you look, you know, to the right, my left. All right. Now, when I cut, I'm putting this here. Hold it down. Okay, here I go. Uh, I'm using the pin nailer. I've mentioned a lot of times. And if you're a little confused, just Google the pin nailer. And you'll see why it's such an amazing tool. Um, you, you won't see... Uh, the edging on that when I'm finished or any pin nails um, the heads the, it's a, just such an amazing tool I can't speak highly enough of it it's a real 
uh, godsend. The reason why I'm doing it here, I don't want it to move on the clamps. Like when you have glue and you're gluing on the edge, you, you could have a lot of movement and a lot of creeping up. And last thing I want to do is start cut, doing a mistake and it creeps up and there's not enough wood on the edge of the door. All right. So I'm just doing the ends now. I, I can't do both at the same time. So I got to kind of go like this, put a solid piece of wood there to catch it so I get equal pressure because that's only a 3 8 piece. And if you don't do it, you, you have a little, you have a gap, and you don't want a gap on that face. And we'll show this door after. Please tune into our videos, support this channel, because we're going to do cool things. I'm only just getting warmed up here. Um, you can see what's really cool is it's actually a cabinet maker doing renovations. It's not the other way around. You got a carpenter fumbling through the interior, figuring out what to do. Now this is a wood. That we're going to use throughout the house and we're going to use baseboard everything we're going to do we got so much wood for this 1500 square foot it's insane so please support the channel click the subscribe uh, forward this to your friends and we'll keep the videos coming um, they're very time consuming so we need all the support we can get and thank you very much for the support that you've given us this far and it's an honor to show you these videos. Thank you.